Viviva have launched their new uh, autumn watercolour booklet of colour sheets and they've sent me one to show you. This is going to be available as of yesterday actually uh, from their website. So if you go to um, the link in the description below, you'll be able to find it. Um, it's the usual thing. I think most of you probably have seen me using this before. And the colours, some of them are different and some of them are the same, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Um, but they are, as it says on here, super vivid, transparent watercolours, um, which are absolutely perfect for painting autumn scenes. And I've swatched out here on this sheet from, this is actually from one of their sketch pads, which I quite like these ones. This is from last year, from Inktober. Um, it's a nice paper um, for painting on. And so these are the colours that I choose to paint autumn scenes. And I think you will have found me using these colours on the video that I did uh, on Monday this week. So the one of the autumn trees in a forest. So that's uh, that's also similarly using these colours. So anyway, um, today I'm going to do something a little bit more abstracty with a bit of um, doodling on it, something along these lines. Don't know how it's going to turn out till I actually do it, as you know. But I'm um, I'm going to. A few of you asked about this, and so I thought I would demonstrate what I did, and we can uh, we can enjoy that together. So let's get rid of this for a sec. Um, the brush and paper that I'm going to use, any brush will do for this, of course. But since we have them now. Um, as a demonstration, I'm going to try using one of my own brushes. These aren't yet available to you, but they will be if you're watching this in the future. They should be coming on the market at the end of October, beginning of November 2023 from Craftmo, and they will have gold tips here and writing on here with our name as well as the Craftmo logo. So there will be that. Um, and I'm using a sheet out of my Canson XL mixed media um, sketchbook here, which again, you've seen this before. I quite like painting on this paper because it has a nice linen texture. It's very heavily sized, so it is obedient to your every wish. So, and it's not that expensive. It's worth the extra little bit of money, although, I, uh, hang on a minute, is it 100% cotton? I doubt it. Um, where does it say? I don't think it is. I don't see any reason why it should be. Uh, anyway, whatever. It's it's available on Amazon. So I'm going to paint on here. I'm not going to take up the whole space. I'm not going to paint to the edges. So I'm just going to give myself a wonky border like that. And I'll paint within that in some way, shape or form. When I did this one, what I did, I started with the lightest colour and I went through the whole range and covered the whole of this area. Then I let it mingle a bit and I gave it a bit of a smush and uh, then I doodled on top of it. So we'll do the same thing. Um, it seems a shame to use these, doesn't it? But well, let's, let's find the yellow. Happy yellow. So I'll just uh, pick up some water pick up some yellow and let's see what happens. It's a nice bright citrus lemon. So we'll just put that in there. Then I'm suspecting that fire, fire, wasn't there a song called fire? So Arthur, Arthur somebody or other, wasn't it? Um, so that's fire, earth, wind and fire. Uh, okay, so then the next colour to that is Dusk Orange. It's this one. I'll put that there. Don't need to try too hard to, uh, what's the word, to control what we're doing. I think Burnt Sienna is the next colour that I want to use. I'm just sort of going light to dark. So hopefully there is Burnt Sienna. Is there not Burnt Sienna? Uh, peacock blue, tree bark brown, earth brown, okay. All right, well, let's, let's use earth brown instead then and put that there. 
and then I'm going to go back to happy yellow and fire and dusk orange how about some autumn leaf that looks nice that looks like burnt sienna really and what haven't we used yet brick red how about some brick red oh look at that that's nice isn't it yeah okay then i'm going to go uh down what have we got down here Tree bark brown, I reckon that's going to be pretty dark. I don't know what this light green is. Let's try that. That looks a bit like sap green. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go back up to fire. And I liked that um, earth brown. Before you say it, I will say it, um, these do get messy, there's no doubt about it, and I wouldn't like to speak for how long each of these ones is going to last, but it's, it's a fun thing to do, and um, somewhat liberating. This is the problem, that, that's, that's the main problem. This is a fabulous colour though, look at that, that is all that makes you think of chestnuts and things like that and that is also a fabulous colour they do mix well together always good if a colour knows how to mix with its friends I'm going to put a bit more um, ugh. see this is this is the problem and this is why I cut them up and put them, I lay them down, cut them up, lay them down and let them um, display themselves. That's what I do normally. But uh, I thought I would try using the swatch because if you were out on the, on the road, you know, on the road again, painting on the go, you probably would want to keep them in the little folder like this and you probably wouldn't want to use as much water as me because I'm a bit of a, a bit slap happy. Uh, where's the yellow? There it is. Happy yellow. Let's put some more of that there. Okay so since this is going to be a semi-abstract doodly kind of thing this is now the point at which I let it dry and I put that away because we're done with that for the time being. And with any luck, what will happen is that sort of lumps and bumps will appear on this and it will have some character, which I can then um, enhance with pen work over the top. You know, like for example, this could turn into two trees I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. We might do another layer of paint as well. It just depends what happens. So I'm going to let that um, sit and do its own thing. And while we wait for that to do its own thing, I want to talk to you about a book. And um, this is an old book. This book was published in 1955, I think. That's what it says. Um, yes. And then it was revised in 1976. So it was it was originally published just after I was born, and then it was revised just before Tamsin was born. So this is a long-lasting book. I don't know whether any of you will have heard of Norman Garbo. I hadn't, of course, because he's American, and I'm sure, I haven't looked him up, but I'm sure um, he must have died a very long time ago. This is him anyway. This is Norman. And Norman Garbo was a very good artist who won a lot of prizes and did a lot of painting. He was mostly an oil painter, but um, in this book he talks about painting and it's a lovely read and I want to recommend 
it to you because we were talking about, you know, I said I would talk about different books that I've got in my library. I don't know where this came from. I can't remember whether I bought it in a secondhand shop here in France. It's very, very likely, maybe even in Spain. But I said, oh, it's got a, it's got something written here. It's obviously come from a shop recently. I don't know which one though. I can't remember. Anyway, it's for painters who want to um, paint and he's, he's just funny. He's hilarious. I, I find him absolutely hilarious. And the funniest thing about it is that it sounds as if it was written yesterday because he says things like, um, where is it? Here, look. In fact, when I walk into an art supply or a bookstore and see the vast amount of material dedicated solely to the proposition that you too can be an artist, I can only think that never before have so many tried to teach so much to so many. That just makes me think of YouTube. I think that's so funny. Um, anyway, and then he goes on to say, it might be a bit hard to believe, but he hasn't written this book just to make the shelves even more overcrowded, but because he thinks he has something to say, and he really does. So without wishing to hammer the point home and bore you all to tears, it's all about how to draw. So if you want to learn to draw, you could do worse than to get this book. It's really got some good information in it. How to get to grips with all sorts of things that bedevil us painters. You know, um, why don't you want to feel, why don't you feel like painting today? Why don't you want to paint outside? Why does everything you do look wrong? How can you make things better? He even goes into a short chapter on a look at modern art, which is very interesting considering when it was written. Um, anyway, just a thought. I'm sure this is available on a books or any of these places, eBay or somewhere like that would probably have it. And if you're looking for a fun read that will make you giggle a bit, um, that used to be my, that was my maiden name, Norman. So I feel like I have something in common with him. My original name was Diane Norman. Um, so he's kind of, you know, connected to me in some strange way. So there we are. That's my book for the day. So a few hours have passed, um, overnight in fact, and um, so I've let this dry completely. It's now a background. We can work on top of that. And I made a couple of photocopies of that on my not particularly special photocopier, so it's not quite the same colour. Um, but it gives me an idea of what to do next by just kind of, you know, throwing a few ideas on there. And I sort of, you know, how it is when your mood changes and you kind of move away. So I've moved away from this idea of the landscape. I've, I've kind of um, fallen in love with the idea of leaves. And I always remember a time not that very long ago when... Um, the leaves all fell off the trees in one fell swoop one night and apparently it was in November, which is unusual. And um, this photo shows you what that looked like and it was amazing. This was in Exeter, never seen anything like it before or since. And it's sort of like the crunch of the leaves under your feet. You just wanted to roll in them. It's amazing. Don't see that very often in England because they usually get all soggy. Uh, anyway, so that's stuck in my mind. But now I have decided, so therefore I'm going to do a carpet of leaves. That's the idea here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've switched from my Viviva sheets, whoops, to the Viviva palette. This is cork and the same paints are in the cork holder, which is, to my mind, easier to use. I know some people like the sheets and they're kind of gimmicky and fun, but uh, for me, this is, this is better. So I've switched to that because it's driving me more driving me mad. <laughs> and now I'm just going to pick up different colours from here and emphasise what's here. So this one is, is brown colour, so we'll pick that up and I'll just um, find myself a mixing tray so I can see what colour I'm picking up. So i do that and I think probably the best thing to do right now is to straighten the camera and... Um, properly. There we are. That's better, isn't it? Okay, so uh, on top of what's already there, I'm just going to paint leaves just to give myself some more shapes. And after that, we will do doodles. Uh, I don't really know quite where this is going to go. I know I've said that before. 
I'm saying it again. I'm not sure even whether the colour underneath is going to lift or not. This is a nice reddish colour. Reddish, reddish. Orange. Um, this wants gold on it. That's pretty clear. So I'm just um, painting over what was underneath. Some leaf shapes, just, you know, ordinary leaves, the sort of shape that all leaves are in our minds, just ovals with a point. And what is the point? I don't know. What's the point? Point is, you don't know. Okay, and then I've got my, here, I've got my gold paints from, um, what's it called? Calero, Calero, I can never remember, it's Caleri or Calero, Calero, I think. Uh, yeah, and this is what's been bugging me. I want to do something here. Let's just paint some nice blobs. I don't think I've painted gold on top of these Viva colours before. It'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Let's move that out of the way. Let's have something coming down from up here in the gold as well. Interesting, isn't it? The way that runs. Hmm. Um. down here in gold. Let's use the gold, the darker gold. Maybe. It's kind of lifting the colour underneath, which is quite interesting because it's giving a real rich effect. Maybe I should go over those ones there. Get the same sort of effect, perhaps. And then perhaps I'm going to go back into this and add some more red. I 
it's all about exploring. And seeing what happens in an un what's the word unpremeditated fashion. It is scary, I don't deny it. it. It is quite intimidating having to paint onto something and I think it's knowing that you can't unpaint it, which is probably why so many people love um, digital painting, you know, using Procreate. I, I've tried, I won't say I've tried it because I haven't really, I've, I've turned on Procreate opened up and sort of played around for five minutes enough to know that it could become incredibly addictive and it, it sets you up to be a hyper perfectionist totally you know oh that's not quite right I'll just add this I'll just add that which is something you just simply can't do when you're painting with your paint you can't I don't think you can anyway maybe some people can I can't Keep on correcting it and going over it and so on and so forth. So this is becoming what you might call abstract leaf pattern. Uh, here we need some, probably some berries, big ones, or maybe something like a spiral. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to say I'm going to let it dry and I'm coming back with perhaps a pen, like um, either black or white, or maybe gold even, don't know for sure yet, but that's enough of the brushwork, I think. Okay, so now to be quite honest, I think probably I'm uh, more or less happy with this the way it is if, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, what I've got though now is what uh, one of my Poetique brush pens in the colour Bitter Chocolate and I was thinking perhaps it would be nice to just spend some time going around some of the leaves with this uh, colour to see what happened and I don't know whether it's even going to sit on top of the paint or not. Um, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work. So we'll just try this out, maybe just darkening some of the areas behind the gold in places to sort of make it stand out a little bit more. Perhaps that would be um, worth doing. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to try and do that. I'm not, not literally painting round the leaves, but just kind of, I don't know, you can see what I'm doing. And we'll see what happens when that dries whether that gives us more of a 3D effect, sort of like shadow behind the leaves, it might, might achieve that. Could be quite interesting. Sort of going over the edges of the painted leaves so that they don't look quite so stuck on. It's pure experimentation here. And then maybe some of the others as well could benefit from similar treatment, but perhaps a finer line like that. 
maybe, just to embellish it a little bit. I'm trying to think of, you know, different ways of using the materials that I have to give interesting effects and, and not to just keep on doing the same old thing all the time. Because if we are going to do mark making and embellishing and stuff like that, it wants to vary. It's no good just sticking with the same old thing, is there? Well, not if, not if you're going to call yourself an artist anyway. If you're, if, you're, if you're going to call yourself an artist, I think you should strive for a bit of growth. I think. I mean, there are plenty of artists who only have to do one thing, I suppose. Uh, are there? I don't know. This is quite fun. It does go over the gold. And I think as it dries, it's going to give an interesting effect. These leaves are a long way from, from looking like real leaves, aren't they? But it's quite interesting to do. easier to do lines using a brush, watercolour brush pen than it is using a brush for obvious reasons. Flow is much smoother, for example. You can add berries anywhere you like very easily. They often improve a composition out of all proportion to what you would expect a little circle to do. A bit like, uh, I'm trying not to make my hand shake quite so much, um, like spirals. Spirals are good too. Put a spiral anywhere, they're symbolic. You know, the old masters, people like Rembrandt and so on, they used to hide symbols in their paintings that only the cognici cognicenti understood. If you weren't one of the ones that knew what it meant, you didn't know it was even there. Messages, secret messages. Put some seeds inside this. This looks like it's become a kind of open fruit like a fig. I'll put some on this one. And the nice thing about these transparent watercolour brushes is that they are transparent and you can see the colour underneath. So use the same colour on top of three different under colours and you get three different tones on top, which is quite interesting. Now see how that has dried with the shadow behind it, so that looks much more, you know, impactful now. So we could do the same down here. And I'm, I'm learning the same as you are. There's no difference between us because I haven't used these materials. These are all new to me. When I first learned to paint, these didn't exist. And when I started doing the YouTube channel, I had no idea that this kind of thing existed. So I'm learning too. I want to put some veins in the center of this one.
There's a, a million different ways you could do this painting. I could have taken the background that I did and taken it in a hundred different directions. So every time we do anything like this, you know, it's, it's different. Okay, and now we've got this one. I'm going to paint half of these leaves. Shadow behind these ones. I suppose that's what it is. Uh, okay, we have these. Don't know what these are. Sort of wonky spirals. Okay, I think we're coming towards the end now. Well, I hope you enjoyed that exploring the Viviva colours, but you could use anything and the uh, the Kurataki paints that a lot of us have got now would do a very good job of a painting like this. And I've often used them and I will again. Uh, but ordinary watercolours too, anything. You don't need to be fussy about what paints you use. It's not, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what paint you use. Best thing to do is to switch off your brain and let your uh, brush do the thinking. See what I mean? And I think we can soften lines with a bit of water like that. So you're not committed. And keep on painting as long as you like. You can lift the colour out using the brush, using a piece of tissue or whatever, but you can always soften the lines like that. Get a more painterly look then. And oh yes, you can go all sorts of ways with this. But I think I'm going to stop there now, go and have lunch because I think it's gone 12 o'clock. And I um, hope you enjoyed that. It's turned out quite different from what I expected. But this is my idea of crunching through the autumn leaves and having fun with colour. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. And I will let you go now. I don't have any animals to show you, so I'll just do a little bit of a close-up of the painting. And I'll say give us a like and subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment. If you have any questions or anything that you want to know, do ask below in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer you. So. Have fun, everybody, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.